In today's tutorial, you'll learn how to take a WordPress website, convert that into a static website, upload it into GitHub Pages, where you can host your website for free on GitHub Pages, and then you can actually uh, run the production version of the site from your own custom domain with secure SSL on GitHub Pages for free. And we're gonna be using a plugin called Simply Static to accomplish this. I'll show you the free version and the pro version, so I'll review the pro version in this video as well. So if all that sounds interesting, then keep watching. Okay, this is the WordPress website we'll be using for our demonstration. We'll be converting this to a static site and we'll be hosting the static website on our free GitHub account. So the first thing you'll need is a WordPress website. So I've got mine here, it's at Dev Idea Spot Online. So any staging domain on any WordPress host will be useful for this. Um, I'm just using my free Oracle account, free Oracle virtual machine um, to host this one. But if you don't have any WordPress hosting online, you can just host it locally on your computer. You could use um, local WP and just run WordPress on your local machine. Um, Laragon.org, similar. Um, I really like this one as well for hosting WordPress websites locally on your own computer. And then you can convert it to static and host it on GitHub. But um, let's use this one for this demonstration. And the plugin that we use to convert the WordPress website to a static website is called Simply Static. So you can get the free version of Simply Static over on the WordPress repository just by adding a new plugin, searching for static, and you can find Simply Static. You can install and activate that one. And besides the free version, there's also a pro version you can get, which has some cool features we'll talk about later. You can get a single license for $69 per year usually, but the link in the description, I've got a lifetime deal for you guys. It's a little bit cheaper as well. I think $59, but the sale's only for five days. So June 14th, you've only got a few days to get on top of that if you want a lifetime deal for a little bit cheaper. So check out that link in the description if you're interested. One thing I was a little bit concerned about, it says use only on one website, but you can actually transfer the uh, license between websites. So I've got my um, lifetime deal here and I can actually, uh, as you can see, I've transferred it from one website to another. So you can actually reuse your license across multiple websites um, on that lifetime deal, which allows you to get a lot of value out of it. If you only actually have a single license, you can, you can keep using it on multiple websites, but only one at a time. You can't have it installed simultaneously, but um, I just thought I'd share that little tip with you as well. Once you've got Simply Static install and active, head over to Simply Static in the menu there. And the first thing you'll want to look at is the general settings here. Pretty much all your settings can be left as default for most use cases here. The one you want to be aware of is this one relative path for replacing URLs. If you're just using WordPress at the root domain, you can just leave that blank. But if you're hosting it on a uh, subfolder, for your WordPress, you want to enter the path. But in my case, I'm going to be hosting this um, on Ideaspot online um, under the root domain. So I'll leave that blank, but just be aware of that. And the next step is to head over to deploy. So in the free version, the only deployment method you'll get is the zip archive method that allows you to generate the static files, download a zip, and then you can upload the zip to your GitHub. So in my case, I would just generate the files, download the zip file, and then upload them from my desktop using uh, GitHub Desktop, for example, for Windows, in my case, um, upload the zip into my GitHub. The other thing you could do with the zip file, I should mention as well, is probably a little better than GitHub in a lot of cases, Cloudflare pages. If you have a free Cloudflare account, you'll notice you have workers and pages. You can actually host static pages for free on your Cloudflare account as well. I'll link in the description because I've done that in a previous tutorial. You can just upload the zip into your Cloudflare pages and that gives you really good free performance for static websites too. And besides the zip archive method, on the pro version, you can actually directly integrate the WordPress site to your GitHub here. So in the pro version, you can do automatic deployment to GitHub and by linking it to your GitHub account. That's what I want to show you guys today, um, this method. So it's just a case of filling out this form to link it up to a GitHub repository. So I've got a personal account, that's my username for GitHub, my email for GitHub, personal access token and repository. We'll show you these steps right now. So let's head to our GitHub depository. Let's make a new repository for our website. So we're creating a new repository. I'm gonna call this one static tutorial. We can put a description in there. I'll just call that static tutorial and go ahead and create that one. And so the repository is gonna be static tutorial there. And the other thing we need is personal access token. I'll show you how to create one of those. That is in your settings, in your user settings here. And down the bottom we'll have uh, developer settings. And here we've got personal access tokens. We want a classic token. 
and we are going to generate a new token, uh, classic for general use. And just add a note to remind yourself what the token is for. This is for my static tutorial website and an expiration date. By default, that's 30 days. You'll probably want this to be longer for your website. So you can actually extend the date to a custom date or you could set it to no expiration date. If you don't want the token to ever expire, you can have to delete it manually if you want to expire the token in this case here. And the only access it needs is the repo access here. So that's all I'm gonna do for this example. We'll scroll down and generate our token. And now we've got our token here. We can copy that one here, head back to our WordPress and put the access token in here into our form. I think that's basically all we need here. So we can go ahead and save that in. That looks all good. Now from here, we should be all good to go. So let's head over to generate static files and it is generating. And this will take a minute, depending on how big your WordPress website is, we'll uh, determine how long this takes. So that looks like it's all done. Like we can check our activity log here. In this case, we can see that it has committed the files and it's all finished. It took about one minute in my case. And the next step is to get the GitHub repository working with our production URL. So IdeaSpot Online is where I ultimately want to host this site. So let's head back to our GitHub, uh, head back to our dashboard. The one we're working on is the static tutorial repository. And we just head to settings and pages. And from here, we just need to select the branch. So that is the main in our case, save that in. And we're gonna be using a custom domain. So Ideaspot Online is the domain we're gonna be using in our case. If you don't have a domain, you can just use the default uh, GitHub IO. It'll give you that for free. But um, in my case, I wanna use a custom domain. I'm sure a lot of you will wanna use a custom domain too. So I'll show you how to do that. So if we follow our link here, learn about configuring custom domains, it gives you all the information here. Most importantly, under managing a custom domain, it's got the actual A records. You need to point your domain over to these IP addresses. I'll show you how to do this. So let's just copy our first IP address here. We're gonna head over to Namecheap in my case, wherever you bought your domain from, you need to head to your DNS manager. So I bought my domain from Namecheap and I'm gonna head over to my domain and under advanced DNS. But if you're using GoDaddy or Bluehost or wherever you've got your domain from, head over to your DNS manager. We're gonna add a records. In this case, I wanna add a new record here, a record, and that's gonna be at, I'm gonna point it to my IP address there, save that in. And then I'm just gonna repeat that for the remaining IP addresses here. So um, they're all the same basically, but this is like 108, 109, 110, 111. So I'll just repeat that in for the other ones. All right, so I've just done that four times for each of these IP addresses. So that looks all good. There's one other record I'd like to do is I have a CNAME record that resolves www back to our root domain. That's just the way I like to do it on my websites typically. There we go. So we're all done setting up our domain name and pointing it over to our GitHub. So let's head back to GitHub here. And now we should be ready to enter our custom domain. Now you can just enter your domain in here and hit save. One optional step, you may just want to check, just check that the DNS is resolving to those IP addresses first. So in my case, dnschecker.org, that's a free tool. You can just type your domain in there, check the A record and hit search. Just make sure it's hitting those IP addresses. This looks all good. So I should be able to put in my idea spot online here. There we go. We hit save and it's going to say our uh, DNS check is in progress. So this does take a few minutes. So just come back. This is successful. So that looks all good. If it doesn't work straight away, just come back uh, after a few minutes and um, reload it. You should get this um, green check mark uh, fairly soon. You also notice down here, it says your TLS certificate is being provisioned. This might take up to 15 minutes here. So just wait until the certificate is being finished as well. So I'll come back a little bit later and we'll continue. Great, so I'm back after about half an hour and now I can enforce HTTPS. And that looks all good. And now our site should be live at IdeaSpot Online in my case here. I can just go ahead and check that out. And that looks like it's running just fine and really responsive as well on the GitHub hosting. So quite impressed. The other thing you'll notice is that the uh, actual static version will run a little faster than the regular WordPress version. So this was the development version on WordPress. It's getting 81 in mobile, 93 in desktop. Now this is a Astra starter site, so it's already pretty quick. But when we run the static version on IdeaSpot Online, we're getting 99 on desktop and 83 on mobile. So a little bit of a boost just by converting it to static as well as having free hosting through GitHub. So um, performance and cost benefits here.
Another nice feature with the pro version is forms. Now in the free version, you don't have forms, but you can use some forms with the pro version. So it supports contact form seven, gravity forms and elemental forms. Uh, there's a few that use Ajax that aren't supported. So fluent forms, formidable forms, WP forms and next forms are popular ones that won't be supported. But if you use any of those, um, you can use this on the pro version with your static website. Um, if you don't want to use the pro version, there are some free forms that you can just embed onto the site, such as, you know, like a jot form is a good one. Type form is pretty good. Uh, obviously there's Google forms is very popular. And um, if you've got Microsoft 365, you can use Microsoft forms. So there's three options as well. Um, you can just embed the form onto your static site. Uh, but if you like to use a WordPress form, these ones will be supported in the pro version. So just be aware of that. The other nice feature in the pro version is you can just update rather than export the full site. If you just want to make a small change, for example, let's just edit the main page here. We'll update there, for example, hit update and wait for this to update. There we go. If we just do an update, generate the files, this will only take a few seconds because it's only changing one file here. Uh, this will be a nice way. You can keep your page updated even though you're just using a static version. So that only takes a couple of seconds. And now when we go back to our site, if I just reload this one, we should get our, our update. So really quick way of running updates on the static website through your development copy of WordPress. You can run updates and still use a static website. So today I showed you how to do this with the GitHub, but there's other options on here. Obviously, it's probably the good ones are Bunny CDN, very cheap and extremely high performance. That would be a good one, as well as Amazon S3 buckets. Those are pretty cheap and very reliable as well. Um, it'd be nice if there was Cloudflare pages on there because the Cloudflare pages um, does a really good uh, performance for static websites. But for uh, Cloudflare page, I've done that previously, which I'll link in the description. You can do the zip archive and obviously just drop the zip archive into your Cloudflare pages if you want to do it that way. And that's free as well, which I'd recommend as well as GitHub. So check that one out as well. Okay, so in conclusion, we can see Simply Static is a nice solution for converting a WordPress site to a static website. And you can host that for free using GitHub or a Cloudflare pages as we saw in the tutorial. Um, this is a good solution for simple websites. It's not going to be suitable for things like WooCommerce or online courses where it's completely um, based on the dynamic database of WordPress. But for a simple business site or a blog, this is going to work just fine. I'd recommend the pro version if you need to do regular updates. We can see how that we could integrate it directly with GitHub and just push updates incrementally, very quick to do with the pro version. With the free version, you can still do it, but you need to download a zip file of the whole website and re-upload the whole website again as a zip file. Um, so you wouldn't want to do that too regularly, but it is possible with the free version. So everything is possible with the free version. It just takes longer. Um, but that pro version, definitely recommend getting that lifetime deal in the description, ideaspot.com.au slash simply static. You can get the lifetime deal, but only until June 14. Sorry, I couldn't um, get you a longer deal on that lifetime deal, but um, I'd grab it while you can if you were interested. But um, from here, I'd recommend checking out my previous video where I use Cloudflare pages to host the site for free. Um, I think that method is quite good as well. And that uses the free version of the plugin. So I'll put that up at the end, but thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.